I'm going to show you how to get your Spike Prime robot to travel an exact distance. Not only that, we're going to use the gyro sensor to make sure it goes perfectly straight. I started by just making a line on my board that was exactly 50 centimeters long. I wanted my robot to go exactly 50 centimeters. So I used the measuring tape, stuck down a piece of masking tape or painter's tape, and then I had a perfectly straight line that went for 50 centimeters. I figured the best way to start your robot was to put the middle axle, the axle in the wheel, right at the start of the tape. And then I did a very simple code, which I just got the robot to move forward for 50 centimeters. It seemed to work perfectly the first time. Then I realized that maybe it might be different depending on the speed. So I decided to make it go 100% speed, as fast as you really can go. And when I tested that, oh, it went off track a little bit. I didn't like that, so I thought I might just try it again. Maybe I didn't line it up perfectly, so I put it down again, had its 100% speed, and nah, went off the track again. I thought, that's no good. What can I do to fix that? I think I need to go a bit slower. So what I did is I went back to my iPad, and I made the speed only 25% and that seemed to work a treat. So the default program for um, distance seems to work very well with the smaller wheels. But would the same program work with the big wheels? I don't think it would, but I'm going to test it anyway. Let's try it with the big wheels going 50 centimeters. Whoa, it went way too far. That's because the wheels are different sizes, and if they've got different size wheels, they've got different size circumferences. So the big wheel has a circumference, that's a lot bigger than a little wheel. In fact, the big wheel circumference is exactly 27.6 centimeters. And a smaller wheel has got a circumference of 17.5 centimeters. So if you put it on the floor and you roll along one rotation, the big wheel would go 27.6 centimeters. And the little wheel would only travel 17.5 centimeters. Now your hub doesn't really know what size wheel you're using until you tell it. So there's a block that says set one motor rotation to such and such centimeters. In other words, you can tell the hub how big the wheels are. And every time it does one rotation, it'll move the number of centimeters that you've typed in there. In other words, it will interpret one rotation as 27.6 centimeters in this case. In other words, one rotation is gonna be the length that the big wheel travels. And when I tested it, it went 50 centimeters, just as the code said. Now there's a link in the description of this video to make a copy of a spreadsheet or Google sheet that I've made uh, called Calculate Rotations Needed. And what you can do is make a copy of it, go file, make a copy, and then if you zoom in here you can see that I've got yellow cells where you can enter a number of centimetres and green cells that will tell you how many rotations it is for big wheels and little wheels. So you can actually type in any number of centimeters you like, and it will tell you the exact amount of rotations that you need to travel that, centimeter, that many centimeters. Now that could be handy if you want to do things like just enter the number of rotations instead of exact distances. So that's the kind of fun thing to play with. If you know the exact number of centimeters, you enter into the yellow cells. It could be 100 centimeters, it could be 80 centimeters, and it will tell you how many rotations the big wheels and the little wheels will take to travel that distance. And underneath that, you can see instructions on what to do. If you're using small wheels, use the code on the left. If you're using big wheels, use the code on the right, just by copying the number from the green cells. So we've worked out how to make it travel an exact distance. But now I'm going to show you how to use the gyro sensor so it stays on track and keeps going straight. Before we really get into the nitty gritty of coding with the gyro sensor, we need to understand that we've got to get some extra blocks. So go to the extensions and grab the more motors blocks because that's important. And we're going to use the display ones as well down the bottom there. But the main concept to do with degrees has to do with this set relative position. Now, that's going to be explained a bit more in detail now. Set relative position, it basically means set start position to zero for the motors. 
So if you looked at your motors, when you run the program, it would make this motor have a zero here at the very start. And it's always good to start from zero because it needs to count. And when you're counting, it's always good to start from zero. So after it starts counting, um, you could say, um, make it start moving. So let's just go start moving. I'm going to show you something pretty cool here. We can display how many degrees there are on the screen. If we go to extensions and choose display down here, we can grab a block from there, which allows you to write something on the screen. And back in your motors, you can get it to write the relative position on the screen. We might just make another block for this, a little stack. When the program starts, right relative position. We might make it do that every 0.1 seconds. Okay, and we're going to loop that forever. Okay, you don't have to do this, but this is just interesting, I think. So, if we press run now, our robot should start moving. And on the screen, it shows you how many degrees the wheels have been turning for. Okay, when you press stop and start again, it goes back to zero because we've set it to zero. And at the moment, they're going negative amount of degrees. So it depends if your forward wheels are going forwards or backwards. And if you want it to go straight, you probably want to put straight up here. Now both wheels are going at the same speed, they're both going at the same number of rotations and therefore it should go in a straight line. Um, if you want it to go positive numbers or if you want the car to go backwards, you could do a negative speed here. A negative speed will make the wheels go the other way. So they're going up now. But it's cool because it counts how many degrees the wheels have turned. Okay, so what we could do is we could set it to zero and then after a while, once it gets to a certain number of degrees, we could get it to stop. In the Google Sheet I've already shown you that's in the description, you go to Sheet 2 and a calculation here of how many degrees things are. So if we travel 70 centimetres, it's 2.54 rotations with the big wheels and it's actually 913.04 degrees. That's how many degrees the wheels will turn in total. And when I was trying to combine the um, gyro sensor with actual distance travelled, I found it was a lot easier to use the um, degrees travelled when calculating things with a constant changing gyro sensor. So let's start coding. I always set the movement motors. I always do C and D. Then we're going to set that. Um, we're going to make sure that we've gone into here and we've chosen more motors. And we're going to choose that block at the bottom of all the other blocks, which says set relative position to zero. Now it can be either one of these motors. It doesn't really matter because our robot's going straight. Either motor can record how many degrees it's traveled, either wheel. So that's fine. And then we're going to use the yaw angle. So let's set the yaw angle to zero. So that whatever way we're facing, we're assuming that it wants to keep on that track. So when you place your car or vehicle at the start of wherever you're traveling, it has to be pointing in the exact direction that you want it to go. And it will set the your angle at zero on your hub. I've played with variables. I don't use variables much, but they're pretty awesome. But they are beyond a few kids, so I don't use them that much. If we go to variables, we can make a new variable. And we're just going to call that one the goal number of degrees or end number of degrees. We'll go end number of degrees and this is where we can type in how many degrees we want our vehicle to travel so now you'll notice that some blocks up here we can use 
and we can just grab the one that says set number of degrees. Now remembering back in our code, back in our spreadsheet here, we wanted the wheels to turn 652.17 degrees exactly. So that's the number we're going to use back in our coding. Back here, we're going to pipe type in 652.17 degrees. It's important to know if that should be a negative number or a positive number. Um, remember when we have our display of how many degrees uh, are being shown. Let's make it go start moving. My numbers go downwards. Okay, they're negative. It's just because of the way I built my robot. Okay, but if my robot's going forwards and my numbers are going downwards, then I can just use a negative number here. When it gets beyond that negative number, we want it to stop. Okay, so that's the number of degree. That's the number of degrees we're aiming for, and it might be positive, or it might be negative, depending on how we build our robot. I give it a negative speed. Get the robot to go the other way. Yeah. So you can change the speed to a negative number. It'll go the opposite way. It's not that important, but if this number here is positive, then this number here has got to be positive. And if this number here is negative, then this number here ne needs to be negative. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine at speed 50, and we'll just test that again. And the numbers are going down, so this one's got to be negative. Okay, because the goal is that when it gets to this, we need it to stop. And it's not going to get to that unless it's going backwards. All right. So, my code, we're going to get rid of that for a sec, and we're going to add a block that says the one that's really important that tells the robot how big our wheels are. This one. That tells the robot how big the wheels are, so we need to use that one. So if we're using big wheels, it's got to say 27.6. And if we're using little wheels, it's going to say 17.5. Okay, so 27.6 there. And that means that it knows that one rotation will be a big wheel. And then I recommend you go pretty slow. We're going to set the speed. And I believe that the slower it goes, the more accurate it is. Okay, it also depends on how strong and stable your robot is. You've got to build it securely you don't want floppy wheels and floppy motors and bits falling off it so you make it nice and strong and also symmetrical if you want something to go straight it needs to be symmetrical that means it's got to be the same on both sides if you drew a line down the middle and put a mirror in the middle would it be an exact reflection on both sides it needs to be symmetrical okay now i haven't started moving yet we're going to use this block called repeat until this one so it's going to do everything in here until we tell it do something until it achieves something up here so let's just start with the movement okay i'm going to go start moving and i'm going to choose the one that you normally choose to make it go straight i would normally just choose this one to go straight and that can go in there and normally if we want it to go straight, we want it to go straight. But sometimes it's going to go a little bit off like this, or a little bit off like this. And we want it to go straight again. So just moving straight isn't going to help because it might hit a bump or it might um, have some extra weight on one side or something might happen where it's going to stop it from going straight. Okay, sometimes some wheels or some motors are even slightly more powerful than others and they can make it go crooked. Inside here, we're going to put one of these operators because we need to do something a little bit fancy. It's the one with the time sign of the asterisk. Okay, so it's got to be a pill with the asterisk in the middle, which means multiply, doesn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to grab from the census tab. We're going to go, we're going to grab the pill that looks like the 
this one. It might say something else, but it needs to say your, because your kind of works out the degrees left to right that it's traveling. But here, we're going to multiply it by negative 1. So it's going to start moving straight. Instead of just start moving straight normally, it's going to go whatever the your currently is, and it's going to times that by minus 1. It kind of inverts or does the opposite to what the your is. So let me explain it using this picture. I found this picture of a 360 degree protractor and I got rid of all the numbers which might confuse you but basically we know that every circle is broken up into 360 degrees but when it comes to calculating your then it's kind of like on one side you have negative numbers up to 180 and on the other side you have just positive numbers up to 180. If it's going to have a negative number it'll be sort of turning to the left and if it's a right if it's a positive number it's kind of turning to the right it really doesn't matter if it's drifting to the left or drifting to the right if it's drifting to the left and going negative then it's going to multiply by that minus one and make it go towards the positive positive. and if it's positive then it's going to um, multiply by that minus one and make it head towards the negative so it's always going to be hanging around the zero because as soon as it goes a little bit off left or right then it's going to head back in the right direction now we need to this repeat position. We, we want to achieve a certain number of degrees. So here, we're going to grab another, another green operator hexagon, and we're going to choose the one that's got a less than sign in it. Our goal is to get this many degrees traveled. So what we need to say is when it's less than and we can just grab the variables, this one here, and put that in there. So when it's less than our number of degrees that we've typed in, then we can get it to stop in a minute. When it's past negative 652, we can get it to stop. When this, the relative position, is past negative 652, then we're going to get it to stop. So we can go back to our extensions here and choose the one that says relative position and put that in there. So it's going to keep doing this until it's gone a certain number of degrees. Okay, and after it's, it's going to keep repeating that over and over and over again. And then after it's done all that, we want it to stop moving. So that should get our robot to travel exactly 50 centimeters and also, if it drifts off course, it's going to do the opposite to what it's doing and get back on course. Let's test it out. The question is, will it work at a speed of 100? Whoa! No matter how good your coding is, 100 is too fast. I always try to respond to every single comment and answer every single question that people post on my videos. So please, let me know what you're thinking. Also, have you noticed that I've got memberships now? They've only just started and I've got two members and here they are at the moment. If you become a member, I'll give you a shout out at the end of most of my videos. And don't forget, I've got lots of help on my YouTube channel about Spike Prime. This, one, this video here is one of my favorites and most popular.